Hey guys, we're back. This time we're going to do a special video. This one is on India. Could be the first to land on the moon's south pole from Seeker. And I'm Nathan. I'm Rachel. Trinity! Troy. Jordan. We don't know what's going on over there. I don't know what that was. We have no idea. But yeah, uh, we, we had a bunch of requests uh, for this video and um, I was talking to Markeev90 on uh, Instagram and he let me know about the uh, the launch today. It was for the Chandrayaan 2 uh, launching off. So uh, I wanted to, yeah, successfully, uh, for, it's a lunar space shuttle. So I wanted to go ahead, we thought we'd go ahead and check this video out since it kind of coincides with that pretty good. So we'll give that a watch, but real quick before we do, thank you guys so much for all the support in the channel. And if you can, hit that like and subscribe along with that little notification bell. Bing! Bing! And yeah. Wasn't so planned. if uh, all you geeks out there are ready, let's go ahead and check the video out. Are you sure that wasn't planned? It really wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Much of what we know Only about our solar system's past is still shrouded in mystery. How did it form? What did it look like? And how did Earth evolve to be what we know and love today? Scientists believe that some of those answers might be lurking on the surface of our most familiar <laughs> neighbor, the moon. And now the Indian Space right. Research Organization, or ISRO, is next to launch their lunar mission. And if successful, India will be the first country to land on the moon's south pole. The moon actually carries the undisturbed record of the solar system's chaotic beginnings, mm -hmm. making this hunk of rock a prime destination for exploration. But it hasn't been easy to get up there, and soft landings are tricky to accomplish. An ISRO's mission, called Chandrayaan-2, will get to the moon riding India's most powerful rocket, the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark III. Standing Whoa. at roughly 43 meters tall and 4 meters wide, I watched this that video vehicle today. is designed to carry over 4,000 mm -hmm. kilograms of payload into geosynchronous awesome. transfer orbit, and over twice that amount into low Earth orbit. But this will be its first trip to our lunar friend. Chandrayaan-2 isn't ISRO's first pursuit to the moon. Back in 2008, they launched Chandrayaan-1, which consisted of just a single orbiter. But that little spacecraft helped confirm the presence of water on the moon including water ice or hydroxyl oh, molecules awesome. spread across the moon's north and south pole regions. The presence of such a resource like water could help us with future deep space exploration technologies, mm -hmm. like a mission to Mars, or even building a sustainable environment for a moon base. Ooh, but be before awesome. we dive into lunar colonies, we need to take a closer look at what the moon has to show, and ISRO's starting with the south pole. The South Pole in particular is a special place since water ice is observed to be nestled in craters that are permanently shadowed. These craters are known to never reach above minus 250 degrees Celsius and may harbor up to several hundred million tons of water ice. To optimize such a treasure trove of material, the Chandrayaan-2 mission is composed of a lot more than its predecessor. Unlike the predecessor Chandrayaan-1, which has just an orbiter, this has a orbiter land or rover configuration. It has a suite of instruments uh, on all these three platforms. So this is a big mission, consisting of an orbiter, a lander module called Vikram, named after the father of the Indian space program, and a six-wheeled rover named Pragyan, meaning wisdom in Sanskrit. All these parts will carry a series of payloads unique to their platform to study the lunar topography, seismography, mineral identification and distribution, surface chemical composition, and temperatures of the moon. That's and all awesome. these aspects are important since there are different kinds of water ice ISRO is looking for. If you see the planetary system, you have mainly three different types or sources of water. The so one is from the endogenic processes, which are primordial in nature. And the second is from external sources like asteroid and cometary impacts. The third is in situ production of water or hydroxyl components. So moon is really interesting because now it has been established that on the moon we have these three different kinds of water present, which is like exceptional, but we don't know how they interact with each other and how we should see this as a complete process. Sriram worked on the dual frequency synthetic aperture radar instrument that's aboard the orbiter and it could help identify this process. Morgan, so hold Chandra on. Two has a two frequency radar instrument which is like completely new. It operates at L and S bands that are 23 centimeter and 12 centimeter respectively. If you combine these two measurements taken at these different wavelengths, you can have a depth profile 
of the surface so the, the chief idea is to differentiate between rough terrains along with the terrains containing water ice so while the orbiter takes to the skies to map water ice beneath the surface the Pragyan rover is blasting topsoil with lasers searching for concentrations of elements that could have been a part of a magma ocean from four billion years ago one works on alpha particle uh, x-ray emission and fluorescence spectroscopy so you blast alpha particles to the surface and then measure X-ray fluorescence and X-ray emission spectrum, and the other payload, which is the LIBS, is laser-induced spectroscopy. So you use laser to shoot the surface and then characterize the plasma. Okay. Well, right about now, you're probably wondering how will we be getting any of this information back to us. Well, this is where our Vikram lander comes in. Vikram will be in communication with Pragyam, and anything the rover finds will be reported back to the Earth via the Indian Deep Space Network. The orbiter will operate independently with the IDSN, so the team can contact it no matter where it is in its orbit. So all in all, this is a complicated and highly impressive endeavor from the ISRO team. While the scientific findings of this mission will have vital future implications for space exploration, this is also a major mission for ISRO. It will showcase yeah. their innovative engineering as they continue to make international headlines as a sustainable and reliable agency. In their latest achievement, awesome. they sent 104 satellites into orbit on a single rocket, beating Dang. up the previous one rocket? rocket by nearly three times over. This is one of many missions that ISRO is planning to explore space. And if Chandrayaan-2 lands on the moon in September 2019, the whole world will be waiting to see what this mission will bring. There are so many things we didn't get to about this mission and many of ISRO's other projects. But if you want to know more, let us know in the comments below. And if you like this episode, make sure to tune in to Discovery's Confessions from Space, Apollo, airing on July 20th. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Seeker. Oh, dang, very cool. You know, I did not know that, um, well, right before we watch this, I know I said, hey, it's special we're going to watch this video because of the launch today. I didn't put the two and two together. I didn't know the launch today was for the South Pole landing. So. Oh, I didn't either. There you go. That was, it was just meant to be then to do this. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know the, uh, the two are related at the moment. Uh, that is very cool, though. I didn't, yeah. um, I'm curious to see how this all works out because, like they said, it seems like a very in-depth uh, process they're going to do right now. And hopefully everything goes smoothly. They're able to land on it. What are you doing? What? Um, this, is it, what they, this is what they sent. That's it right there. Okay, yeah, there's the lander. So everything's in that. You know what kind of gets me too is seeing those pictures, and you you do the same thing with NASA too when That's you when you see stuff awesome, is, dude. you look at the stuff going up and it looks so fragile. Oh yeah. Yes, yeah. like it's like a the, the, didn't they say that some of the stuff that, that this is coming from Apollo 13 when they had the the movie and it's like oh my gosh everybody's gonna die because it's the thickness of aluminum foil. And it's like, yeah, super, like, ridiculously, like, thin, some of the stuff. Because you look at it, like, when they were showing them, it looked look like they were with the landing uh, module. Yeah. And it's covered with all that gold. It looks like gold foil. And you're like, how on earth can that thing stand up to, to all that? But The they, gravity they, and everything bouncing against it, it's like... They figure out a way to do it, though. I mean, I know it's all encased in the thing to get up there and everything, so... I thought, you know what I thought was cool? Um, them holes in the moon, the craters. craters. Uh, I forgot they how many times it said that it held. That's a lot of water. Of oh, water. yeah, yeah. Um, excuse yeah. me, the, yeah, the amount of water is I was just thinking holds. about, like, what if you landed and accidentally fell Girls! You're, you're screwed. Huh? I was just trying to think about how big that crater would be. You're dead. Would Say bye-bye. You, a big old crater. No mas life. Like, Troy, don't, because that really picks up on the... Bonito. Um, no mas. I liked it. Whenever I hear about, like, water on the moon, I keep thinking aliens and stuff because I want aliens to be real and I hope they are. And who knows aliens. they say that uh, conspiracy theorists say there are bases alien bases on the moon so we'll and we have, they have, like, sure the like, India will file. find out first. So now we got a big empty spot right here but that's okay imagine you guys sitting right here next to us. Hi That'd be cool. Indian friends. Or American friends. Uh, no. Hey get down. Get down. <laughs> hey Chance get down. Jordan, what'd you bring up here? Greetings, my friend. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Yeah, who's that? Is that is he from Area 51? Who's that handsome ball fan? If there it's are okay, aliens Dexter. on the moon, I doubt they'll look like that. But Dexter, shush. But as far as the uh, Israel mission goes, um, so they said they had a successful launch today, which is awesome to hear. And hopefully they they have a smooth smooth trip to the moon. Yep. And uh, everything goes out good because it would be very cool. I love watching the. Um, the photos and stuff that these landers and all that take. Um, I'm super excited of for like those. the moon and Mars and stuff like that. I love going online and looking up those pictures. Uh, it's very cool. But yeah, let us got, let us in, uh, know in the comments uh, down below, guys, what you guys thoughts are of the uh, the the mission right now, the uh, the launch and everything. How excited you were for it and uh, all of that. So we're not even gonna wait for Jordan. We're gonna go ahead and end it here. So thank you guys so much for all your love and support. And uh, yeah, we just, it means, it means the world to us, guys. So thank you so much. Love you. Thanks, guys. Love you. Two. Wait, one. after this, I'm going to make brownies and cookies into one thing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Why would you do this? <laughs> <laughs> and there's one side of the movie. Well, maybe they won't cover anything up like NASA. Excuse us. I'll be back. Keep going. Where are you going? I'll be back. Gotta get Rob. I have no Gotta idea what's what? going on this oh, bag. He's getting something. He's getting something for y'all. I'll just block his face out. Just I'll, block his face out. I'll just crop. I'll just, just, put oh, sorry, a geek, just put a geeky no, music no, logo look, over just it. Just put it at the end without any sound. I'm not going to put it at the end.